Hey YouTube, it's ICU, and today Apple released iOS 8.4.1 to the public, additional details on that here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to downgrade 8.4.1 back to iOS 8.4 so that you can then follow my Taiji Untethered Jailbreak tutorial to re-jailbreak and then reclaim the tweaks that were lost when updating. <laughs> All right, and to start off, ensure that you watch this video on the desktop version of YouTube because there will be a number of annotations and cards throughout it that will assist you along the way. And with that said, again, we are going to be highlighting a method of downgrading iOS 8.4.1 back to iOS 8.4. The only caveat is that once Apple stops signing iOS 8.4, you will no longer be able to restore back to it. So there will be an annotation on your screens now letting you know what the status of iOS 8.4 is and whether Apple is still signing it. If you're watching this video at a later point and Apple is no longer signing iOS 8.4, then there will actually be two annotations. The first of which will let you know that, stating that Apple is no longer signing the firmware. And the second annotation will be the latest untethered jailbreak status for the next utility post iOS 8.4.1, whether that's for that firmware or for iOS 9. So definitely keep that in mind and refer to the annotations because they are crucial. Once Apple stops signing 8.4, this tutorial will no longer be relevant as it won't be possible. And the only reason it's possible to go back right now is because Apple is still signing the latest two firmwares, being iOS 8.4.1 and 8.4. Though Apple will stop signing the latter of the two, it's not a matter of if, but rather when. They always do this. They will always continue to do this and still sign the past firmware following a new release for an undisclosed period of time. Now, they may stop signing 8.4 tomorrow or a week from now. We really just don't know. So that's why you need to check the annotations. Now with that said, you're only going to need one thing downloaded for this guide, and that's just the corresponding iOS 8.4 IPSW for your device. Now I will actually have a link down below in the more info to a post on my site, Best Tech Info, that will not only contain written instructions, but also downloads for the 8.4 IPSWs. You'll actually be redirected to this site. It's a really great one. It just has two drop downs. All you have to do is just select which device you have. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using an iPod Touch 6 gen so that's all I have to select and then we're going to select the firmware version in this case iOS 8.4 and this is another safeguard because it actually tells you whether the firmware is still being signed if it's green that means you're good to go if it's red it means it's no longer signed by Apple so that's kind of your other fail safe to know whether Apple is still signing 8.4 or not and if 8.4 is still being signed and you're encountering issues during this process, I can guarantee that's because you have the incorrect IPSW for your device downloaded. So check the model number and look up the identifier, in this case, iPod 7, 1. That's correct for the 6th gen iPod Touch, so I know I'm good to go, and it is iOS 8.4. So we can continue and we can proceed here and downgrade from iOS 8.4.1. I'm just going to show you guys really quick that this iPod Touch is indeed running the latest firmware inside of the settings app. So let me launch it really quick, followed by general, about, and down below at the bottom for the version, you'll notice this sixth gen iPod touch does indeed confirm it is running 8.4.1 as stated there below. All right, now that we've reached this point, provided you keep everything I've said thus far in mind, then we can plug into our computer just via a standard USB cable and then launch iTunes. It also doesn't matter whether you're on Windows or Mac OS X, just so long as you have the latest version of iTunes installed. And with iTunes open here, we just need to take one thing into consideration, and that's whether we have Find My Device on, because if you do, you probably will run into issues trying to restore inside of iTunes. So you'll need to disable that just inside of settings and then scroll down to iCloud. And then at the bottom, go to Find My Device. It will be dynamic based on what type of device you do own. So in this case, it states Find My iPod Touch, and we need to turn this off. So just toggle it off and input your iCloud password. And once it's off, as you can see, it was quickly disabling there. It didn't take long at all. Then we can continue and then we'll actually be able to restore inside of iTunes. So let's go ahead and refocus here. All right, and what I want you guys to do next does depend on your type of computer. So if you have a Windows-based PC, you need to hold down Shift. If you're on a Mac like I am, you need to hold down the Option or Alt key on your keyboard. And once you have that key held down, you need to left-click Restore Device. Mine says Restore iPod. Yours may vary depending on what you have plugged 
again, but you need to left click on restore and not check for update. And once you do, you will receive this selection window. And from there, you can just point it at the IPSW that you downloaded. So as you can see, we have the iPod Touch 6 Gen iOS 8.4 IPSW selected right here. And we're just going to click on open. And then from there, it asks if we're sure we want to restore our iPod to iOS 8.4 and that it's going to verify it with Apple. Now we definitely want to click on restore so that it proceeds here. I'm also going to leave the iPod touch up on the screen throughout the duration of this process just so you guys can see approximately how long it will take, though it may vary for you. So just be sure to click the annotation down below at the bottom of this video. If you're not interested in watching through the entire restore process, I actually recommend it because that way you can kind of just skip ahead more toward the end when we're actually on iOS 8.4. So again, refer to the annotations if you don't have any issues at this point, but if you want to see how long it takes, then just stick around. And as you can see now below the Apple logo, we do have a progress bar. Keep in mind that said progress bar will not align properly with the bar inside of iTunes. That's perfectly fine. That's because on your device, the progress bar is reminiscent of the entire process, whereas inside of iTunes, it's just for the specific stage of the restore that it's actually on. So iTunes will have multiple progress bars, whereas on your device, it will just be one synchronized bar for the entire process. All right, and inside of iTunes, it's moved past restoring iPod software to verifying iPod software. So as long as Apple's still signing iOS 8.4, guys, you should be perfectly fine. If they're not signing the firmware and you're trying to do this at a later point, then it will definitely give up an error before then. Now, as you can see inside of iTunes, we do have a message stating that our iPod Touch has been successfully restored to factory settings and that the window will disappear. Now, I'm just going to minimize iTunes here and we should should have one last bar on our device below the Apple logo. That's just the on device consolidation step and that doesn't take long at all. Once that's complete, you will be at the slide to set up screen to actually get started. All right, the bar is gone and we should be at slide to set up shortly. So let's just go ahead and wait for the iPod.
All right, so here we are. As you can see, we do have the hello slide to setup screen. And I'm actually just going to go through this really quick until we get to the end right before the get started option, just so I can input some of my personal data here and we can kind of speed this up. All right, guys, so here we are at the final setup screen. I'm just going to tap get started and it should exit to the home screen. As you can see, we're now at the home screen of iOS. Also inside of iTunes here, you'll notice that it says, welcome to your new iPod. You need to click on continue to jailbreak successfully. So once you click on continue, you can actually close out of iTunes. We no longer need it for this tutorial. You will, however, need it when jailbreaking iOS 8.4. Now I'm going to unplug the iPod Touch now. We no longer need the computer. And getting a close up here, we're actually going to launch up settings. Again, general, about, and down below at the bottom for the version. You'll notice that this iPod Touch now confirms it is running iOS 8.4. So we did it, guys. We went from iOS 8.4.1, a firmware that is not jailbreak breakable and that does patch the Taiji jailbreak to iOS 8.4 and we can now jailbreak successfully using Taiji. I really do hope you guys like this video and remember it will work for you provided Apple is still signing iOS 8.4 and once you've reached this point you can re-jailbreak. I will have links on the screen now to my untethered Taiji jailbreak tutorials for both Windows and Mac OS 10. Again guys I really hope this helped you out. If it did be sure to click the subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to and that way you will be updated every time I post new content related to jailbreaking and iOS in general and also of course the next untethered jailbreak. And quickly, if you guys are interested in earning some awesome free prizes, then just navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari and sign up. Once you do, all you have to do is just download and install some of these free offers here, and then you can redeem the points for actual prizes, including paid apps from Apple's App Store and gift cards. It's as easy as that. And if you guys want to be updated even more often and know exactly when I'm posting new content, just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ICUID. And until next time, this is ICU signing out.